sweetie? This is not at all awkward. Okay, so I'm getting ready to make a survival kit for a post-apocalyptic LARP for Max Sterling at LARPgasm. He is also making me something special, which I will do an unboxing for. So make sure to head over his to his channel to see him unbox this and be all surprised. So let's get started. Okay, first thing you're gonna need for weathering is instant crappy coffee and boiling water. Yes, boiling, be careful. Uh, I've just taken it out of the kettle and I'm just gonna put in a little bit at a time. Actually, that might be just about perfect. So depending on how dark you want it, you wanna put less water so it'll be thicker for darker. See, kinda see. I've had more than one person who I've made stuff for say this is the smell of after the fall. <laughs> the post-apocalyptic look that I do. So now we've got, this is just gonna dye anything to look really dingy and gross. I've also got some string, some broken feathers from a costume. Um, Cornelius' thing is feathers, so I thought I'd put a little feather on his thing there. Some pretty gross coloring acrylic paints. There's a red, this horrible like poop yellow, and, and a burnt umber, which is like a brownish color. So I've just got some kind of dingy colors. A couple different types of sandpaper. A couple little badges that I got for free at a convention. So there are four video games, I'm sure. Um, but this one actually said Battle Cry, and then that one was Little Skull. So I thought they'd very much fit him. I've got some little scissors just in case. And then I have what we're modifying. So the first thing is going to be the little package that this comes in. So this is a survival tool, if you didn't see the unboxing for this, um, and all that. This is useless because it's all in Chinese, and I don't think he speaks Chinese, so I'm going to take this off, just a little sticker here. Start us out. The problem is, this looks really new, so I'm going to do this really sloppily so there's still some sticker on there. Cool. Because you don't want it to be perfect. Cool. So we've got some stickery bit left, and I'm actually gonna just bust this out so it's gonna make it look aged a bit. Hey, look how magic that is, just instantly. And when that dries, or you can wipe off the edge bits, it's just gonna look like a very old sticker, like this has been in his wallet forever and ever. Then on the other side, first I'm gonna just rough it up with a little bit of sandpaper because it's looking so new and shiny. The key to this is you want to get the ridge where it's going to be like pressed up against is where the crease really is going to happen. So you're just trying to recreate that crease a little bit. Cool. So that's already a little bit less shiny. See? It's already starting to look like something that's been in his pocket for years. Actually, that might just be fine just like that. So you've got the sticker that's sitting on there looking aged. Again, I'll dry that. Um, and then you've got it really scuffed and you can really see kind of the edges. So this has been in his pocket for a while. I think I'm gonna leave that like that actually. I'm happy with that. Uh, moving on to the next thing is going to be this survival belt. It's got the whistle, the compass, the little knife. So I'm gonna be a little careful, but really it's not that sharp. Um, I'm hoping it fits him. It was meant to be a men's one and it's pretty big on my little wrist, so I think it'll be entertaining to see him put it on after me having it on. So I can fit a few fingers in there. So hopefully that means it'll be, well, I didn't even have to clip it on and off. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna do anything to the whistle because I want him to be able to use that in character, um, but I am gonna scuff it up. This is really the first thing you're always gonna do with any hard sort of plastic. Um, I did scuff that a little bit because that's what's poking up the most. So realistically, that's going to get scuffed the most, but I wanted to still be able to read it. So I'm going to just put my finger over that and watch. Be careful if yours has a little blade or something on it that you're not cutting yourself. And the parts that are sticking up the most are the ones that would have been rubbed the most. Cool. Easy done. 
Now, I don't really want to compromise the paracord, but I'm thinking if he's gonna use paracord, he's gonna use this one. So this is gonna be more for looks than for anything. So I am going to scuff it up a little bit. I'm gonna try not to tear it too much, but I want it to, I'll bring it up close when I'm done. I do want it to look like it's starting to come undone. close and personal there now. See it's got some nice little scuffs. So it's looking pretty good. And I'll do this one up close and personal for you too. Looking less shiny and new. That definitely looks like an old receipt on there. Cool so we're going to move those back. Next up is we're going to do the paracord. So this one I don't want to scuff as much so I'm going to go with a slightly um, not as rough and just do little bits so I don't want I want him to be able to use this cord if he wants to but I don't want it to look brand new so gentle folks you're basically just wanting to create a couple little tears you just don't want it to look new and shiny this is where you can go to town Scuff the hell out of that. Make some of the color come off of it. That's what you really want. Be careful. Um, this one is actually really good. It doesn't really take skin off too easily. Just be careful so you don't sand yourself. Boom. Sandpaper is your best friend for metals, plastics, things like that. So then that's already helping. And we've got this little metal bit here. So I'm gonna do a bit of the same because it's too shiny. Boom, instantly less shiny. I'm finding that one still pretty shiny. So what I'm gonna do on that one, I'm gonna take this other one and I'm gonna just paint it with a little bit of acrylic paint. I'm gonna use the brown, Let's see how the brown, there we go. So this is like a really dark, gross brown here. Ah, it's like chocolate, I guess it's not that bad. So then I'm just gonna, put a light coat on here because I just want it to look dirty really flip it over do about the same now if you do it too consistent like there it's looking pretty pretty dark a little rusty a little that color actually is really good because you can still see the metal through a little bit so it looks a little rusty, which is great. We've got some of the foil sticking out here, which isn't the worst thing, but I don't want to compromise anything that's inside of it. So now that needs to dry, but I've just taken a feather and I've tied a string on it and I've just like double knotted and wrapped it around. Nothing too fancy there. And I'm going to attach this. I should probably wait to do this until it dries, but it'll just add some dinginess onto here as well, I guess. Boom, double knotted. I like the idea of it just like kind of hanging around there. I'm gonna put the carabiner back on it. So there we have it. I like the feathers a bit broken as well. Cool, so we'll set this one over here to dry. Now, our last thing, this is going to be the biggest project here. It's our first aid kit. Now, I want what's in here to still be usable as a first aid kit, so I'm going to empty it out. And I'm finding the lining of this, actually, for being a cheap one off eBay, it's actually kind of like a plastic lining. So I actually feel like that's waterproof. Awesome. Okay. Now, we're going to go in with this first our little coffee mixture, because this is too bright. First thing, so I'm gonna close that, 
and I'm just gonna do a light painting over the whole darn thing, just kind of, or you can smear it around. I really want it on that white, because that's just too nice looking. Oh, can you tell it's, yeah, that's okay. So go over that first. Slightly less. Still very white, but there we go. That's starting to go. Now we want to make it look like I didn't just go on there, so. Be good if you imagine, like, how did it get so gross? So I'm just going to make it so it's mostly stained in this one area, actually. So it looks like he's dropped it in the mud. Or there could be blood on it, I don't know. Because it's a dark, ominous stain. Really could be anything. Which is great, let people use their imaginations a bit. That's part of what LARP is all about, isn't it? I like to do all my painting and dyeing first. Some people like to scratch it up first, each to their own. You do you. So I like that it's kind of splotchy in that corner, instantly looking a bit grosser. And then if you can see the other side, that's how new and shiny, new and shiny it looks versus it looks like it's been through the ringer a little bit. Not quite enough though. So I'm gonna go on the same side. This side's the really gross side here. So I'm gonna make sure it's similar on this side. Maybe not as far, but I'm gonna definitely So I've just kind of had that stain go on that corner, which I really like. So um, that's actually absorbing pretty well, so it's not super sticky. I was worried it'd be. This can be a little sticky sometimes, but then, like I said, you just throw some flour over it. Cool. Now, coming back to our paint. The red I think I'm going to use to actually give some more staining. Sorry, the angle's not perfect for me doing this. And the back is where we're gonna really get some of this on there, I think. And you could even, oh, actually I can do that a bit. You can flick it, potentially, if it's. So this makes a mess, but all I'm doing is flicking it there and it's giving like splatters. Hopefully you can see my splatters there. So I'm gonna do that with the red. Just put a glob on there and start flicking away. Oh, that was a good splatter. Oh, that's better. Gross. Um, and I am going to let that dry. I'll do it on the other side as well. Um, and I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna do a bit more. Okay, so I just threw that into the oven and I stood there, so don't walk away. But now it's all dry, that's not sticky at all, so you don't even need the flour. And I don't know if it's showing up well, but it's looking pretty blood splattered and stained. Now, we're gonna add a little bit of flavor to it. So, just, I've got that little patch, that I, that little wood thing that's pretty awesome. And I put a little bit of red on it, so it looks a little blood splattered as well. I'm just gonna attach that on this side in the middle sorry so just look at that there now I don't curse but if anyone has watched any of his videos he does so I'm putting a curse word There you go. So when that's sitting on his belt, people are gonna be able to see that. 
And then I'm just gonna take our handy dandy stuff and I'm gonna scuff it up a little bit. Over the stain, it's making it look a little lighter, so I won't do heaps there, but I will do towards the edge because then it's looking fluffy, if that makes sense. Like, like that just makes it look so old. I love it. And I'm being careful not to go over the acrylic paint that's like the fake blood splatters. But I am going over the, um, what I've just written there so that can get a little stuffed. Ba -da -da -da. Let's see the other side. I don't want some good scratches there. Awesome. I'm really, really happy with that. Now I'm just going to put these things back in there. I've checked and it actually hasn't gone through at all. So that plasticky goodness is great. The only thing is I have compromised it a little bit with that pin, but if a tiny, tiny bit of water gets in, he can deal with it. <laughs> so I'm gonna put in all this legitimate stuff. Now you could use that in character if your um, character can do field medic, or you can just have it on hand. I mean, he can take some of it out. There's quite a bit in there, but you know, he can decide what he wants to take and what he doesn't, but. These sorts of like, even the little plastic tweezers and tiny little scissors, those are so useful. And a couple safety pins, which will be good for kit repair as well. Now, I have one more special little thing for him. I'm gonna do this, it's not at all weird. Hey Max. I hope this really freaks you out. So, have you ever had white mulberries? I'm gonna guess that you haven't. They're pretty hard to find. Um, they have them at Costco here, but see the photo? They look like nice white little whatevers, but when you actually open them up, they kind of look like dried bugs, worms specifically. I think maggots would probably be the closest explanation. So. We're gonna do a little something to freak him out, and plus it will be pretty cool in a kit. I've written emergency protein misspelled on there. You're welcome. Onto a plastic bag. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually cut the bottom of the bag off, or rip it. Doesn't matter because I'm gonna be covering it with, because I still want the bag to be usable, but I just want it to look a little more janky. Um, and I'm going to use duct tape. Or as they say here in Australia, gaffer tape. But yes, I don't know why. I don't get it. I'm just gonna set that there. Okay, and cut. And then all you're gonna do is you're gonna fold that over cover because it says uh, Woolworths on there or Safeway Select, something like that. And then you just cut the edges, the excess. Make sure it stays nice and sealed though. If you need to go back and put a little bit or just leave it. I think I do. I think I've cut that a little too close so we'll just put a little extra. And actually that looks pretty good. Like if you have to patch it up that's really good. So emergency protein. Now I'm not going to, you can weather the bag. I can put a little bit of the coffee on there to make it look faded and dirty. Um, but I want him to know that it is sanitary so I'm not gonna do too much to it. But you can do the same sort of things. I've done sandpaper and then if it does an actual hole, I'll patch it with a little bit of duct tape. Um, and I've also used the coffee mix on there and it all works really well so you can choose to do any of that. And here is our Again, they're just white mulberries, so nothing too scary in there. Yeah, they kind of look like little gross 
grubs or something. <laughs> so I hope his brain goes there. So there we go. We've got our emergency protein, which look like little bugs. Special delivery from Australia. Okay, I'm gonna do a thing that I never do and just hold the camera. Thank you so much for watching this. I hope you found it helpful. If there's other things you want to see me do, make sure to comment below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. If you already have, because I love you, make sure to hit the little bell icon so you know when I post, because I do post pretty frequently. And last but not least, keep being your weird and wonderful selves. Thank you so much. See you next time. Thank you.